Have you ever wondered what it takes for a person to become a monster? It's a question that sends chills down our spine, and yet it's a reality that exists in the form of serial killers. These are individuals whose actions defy human comprehension, whose minds are enigmatic labyrinths of darkness. One such individual is Pedro Alonso Lopez, a name that has become synonymous with horror. Known as the Monster of the Andes, Lopez's crimes spanned across multiple countries, his victims numbering in the hundreds. This is not a tale for the faint of heart, it's a chilling journey into the depths of human depravity. Lopez's story is a stark reminder of the monsters that lurk among us, their actions concealed beneath a veneer of normality. So steal your nerves, gather your courage, and prepare yourself as we delve into the dark and twisted life of Pedro Alonso Lopez. Born into poverty and violence, Pedro Alonso Lopez's life was marred by tragedy from the start. His story begins in the slums of Tolima, Colombia, in the late 40s, where he was the seventh of 13 children. His mother, Benilda Lopez de Castaneda, was a prostitute. She struggled to provide for her children, often resorting to desperate and dangerous means to do so. This was not a childhood filled with love and security, instead, it was a time of hardship, deprivation, and neglect. The young Pedro was left to navigate the treacherous streets of his neighborhood, often going days without a meal. His home was not a refuge but a battleground, fraught with violence and chaos. When Pedro was just eight years old, his mother caught him touching his younger sister and cast him out onto the streets. This cruel rejection by the very person who should have protected him only added to the layers of trauma that were accumulating in his young mind. Homeless, alone, and desperate, Lopez fell prey to a predatory older man who lured him with promises of care and safety. Instead, he found himself subjected to severe sexual abuse, a horrifying experience that further warped his perception of relationships and love. Throughout these years, Lopez was also exposed to the ugly underbelly of society, witnessing violence, crime, and degradation on a daily basis. These experiences coupled with his own personal traumas likely shaped his twisted worldview and desensitized him to suffering. As he grew older, Lopez's life of desperation evolved into a life of crime. He was caught stealing cars and spent two years in prison, where he was subjected to further physical abuse. These experiences, among others, likely fueled his hatred and mistrust of society. These traumatic experiences, however, were just the beginning of the horrors Lopez would inflict upon the world. His childhood, marked by rejection, abuse, and violence, laid the groundwork for the monster he would become. In the years to come, Lopez would transform from a victim of circumstance into one of the world's most notorious serial killers. In his early 20s, Lopez started to transform from a victim to a predator. This period of his life marked a chilling metamorphosis, a descent into a darkness that would consume him and spread terror across several countries. Lopez's criminal activities began with petty theft, but his appetite for chaos and destruction was insatiable. The thrill of stealing morphed into a more sinister urge, an urge that would ultimately lead him down a path of murder. He was caught and sent to prison where he experienced the harsh realities of incarceration. But instead of being reformed, he found a darker purpose. Behind bars, Lopez was subjected to violence and abuse, further fueling his anger and resentment towards society. This was a turning point, a catalyst that pushed him over the edge. His decision to start killing was not impulsive but rather a calculated choice, a response to the world he felt had wronged him. Lopez's first murders were nothing short of horrifying. He targeted young girls preying on their innocence and vulnerability. His reasoning behind these heinous acts was chillingly cold and devoid of empathy. He saw himself as an avenger, exacting a twisted form of justice on a world that had abandoned him. Lopez's victims were not just numbers, they were daughters, sisters and friends. Each life he took was a testament to his growing ruthlessness and detachment from humanity. The frequency of his killings escalated, hinting at an increasing comfort and confidence in his monstrous acts. His modus operandi became his signature, a calling card that struck fear into the hearts of communities across South America. The true horror of Pedro Alonso Lopez was his ability to blend into society, to appear as nothing more than an ordinary man while hiding a monstrous nature beneath the surface. His heinous acts were not the result of a momentary lapse in judgment, but the calculated actions of a man consumed by a dark and destructive force. As Lopez's body count started to rise, so too did his notoriety. His name would soon become synonymous with fear, marking the beginning of a reign of terror that would span across multiple countries and decades. 
Between 1969 and 1980, Lopez claimed the lives of hundreds of young girls. It's a chilling statement, isn't it? An unnerving testament to the depths of human depravity. Pedro Alonso Lopez, an unassuming man with a monstrous secret, embarked on a reign of terror that spanned several South American countries. His method of operation was as sinister as it was methodical. He would lure impoverished, often indigenous young girls away from open markets or rural villages, promising trinkets or the illusion of safety. Then, he would lead them to secluded areas where he enacted his horrifying deeds. His victims, aged 8 to 12, were chosen not at random, but with a chilling precision that speaks volumes about the twisted psyche of this predator. These were girls on the cusp of adolescence, vulnerable and trusting, their innocence ruthlessly exploited by a man whose heart held no shred of empathy or remorse. Lopez's reign of terror stretched across three countries, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. In each of these nations he left behind a trail of devastation, communities torn apart by grief and fear, families forever scarred by the loss of their daughters. As we delve into the extent of his crimes, it's important to remember that Lopez is considered one of history's most prolific serial killers. His self-reported victim count exceeds 300, a number so staggering it defies comprehension. This is not a figure to be sensationalized, instead it serves as a stark reminder of the monstrous capacity for evil that can exist in the human heart. Yet despite the magnitude of his crimes Lopez managed to evade the authorities for over a decade. His ability to blend into the communities he preyed upon, coupled with the marginalization of his victims, allowed him to continue his gruesome spree unchallenged. But even monsters can't hide forever. The net began to close around Lopez in the early 1980s, marking the beginning of the end for the monster of the Andes. In 1980, Lopez's reign of terror finally came to an end. The man who had been haunting the nightmares of countless families across South America was finally apprehended. In the bustling market of Ambato, Ecuador, a vendor spotted him attempting to lure a young girl away. She raised the alarm, and the monster of the Andes was caught in the act. Once in custody, Lopez's confession sent shockwaves across the world. He calmly detailed his monstrous deeds, admitting to the murder of not 10, not 20, but over 300 girls. His cold recounting of such heinous acts was a chilling testament to the depths of his depravity. His trial, held in 1981, was a spectacle that gripped the world. The courtroom was filled with the deafening silence of disbelief as Lopez, without a trace of remorse, revealed the chilling details of his crimes. His lack of empathy was as horrifying as the crimes he committed. However, the controversy surrounding his sentence was as shocking as his confession. Despite being one of the most prolific serial killers in history, Lopez was sentenced to just 16 years in prison, the maximum penalty in Ecuador at the time. This lenient sentence sparked outrage globally, as people struggled to reconcile the severity of his crimes with the punishment he received. Public pressure eventually led to an additional two years being added to his sentence for subsequent crimes, but this did little to quell the indignation of those who felt that justice had not been served. The world watched, helpless, as a monster was handed a penalty that seemed to barely scratch the surface of his monstrous deeds. The fall of Pedro Alonso Lopez was a moment of relief for many yet it also highlighted the flaws in our systems of justice. It was a stark reminder that sometimes, the monsters live among us hidden in plain sight. In a world that could no longer ignore his monstrous deeds, Lopez was finally brought to justice. A world that would forever remember the chilling tale of the monster of the Andes. Pedro Alonso Lopez, the monster of the Andes, left a horrific legacy in his wake. His heinous crime sent shockwaves through the communities he terrorized, leaving an indelible mark of fear and suffering. After serving a prison sentence that many felt was far too lenient for the magnitude of his atrocities, Lopez was released into the world. His subsequent disappearance has only added to the haunting mystery that surrounds him. This man whose actions spread terror across countries has seemingly vanished without a trace, leaving behind unanswered questions and a chilling unease. The horrifying nature of his actions and the lasting effects they have had on his victims' communities are a stark reminder of the depths of depravity that humanity can sink to. The legacy of Pedro Alonso Lopez is a dark one. It is a tale of monstrous deeds, a story of terror, and a testament to human evil. Lopez's story serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human soul.